Greetings one and all. I want to talk about preparing a drive for usage under Linux today. I remember back in the early days, one of my biggest stumbling blocks with Linux was preparing drives and other devices for usage. Back in the day, no one partitioned floppy drives or 10 megabyte hard drives for that matter. With the exception of CPM that is, which did have tools for partitioning a floppy drive or said hard drive. Nowadays, one of the questions I get a lot is how do I prepare a disk or other device for usage? In most versions of Windows since 95, you plug in a USB drive, and if Windows recognizes that the drive is there, but not formatted, or at least not formatted in a format Windows likes, aka NTFS or FAT, it asks if you want to format it, and you have the choice of which of the two formats you want to use, and it's all click and pick. Easy peasy, done. However, even today in Linux, I have no such options. And I am running a bleeding edge KDE on Arch. Now to be fair, my system does recognize a very large number of drive layouts and formats. So the only issue tends to be with unrecognized drives that maybe have a damaged file system or whatever. It doesn't know what to do with them. Like I say, Windows defaults to automatically letting you format it. But I still don't get an option to reformat, which is some ways is both good and bad. Linux does, however, have facilities for preparing drives for usage, just not when you originally stick the drive in. So in this video, we will cover a couple of options for doing this, both using the graphical user interface and the terminal. Just a heads up, I'm going to shorten graphical user interface to GUI or GUI for the rest of this video. If you're interested in a particular method, check the timestamps in the description and skip ahead. And let's get to it. In this video, we will be starting with the uh, GUI option for preparing drives for usage. There are several steps involved, selecting a partition scheme, partitioning the drive, and formatting the drive with a file system. Cover some of this in another video. We are not going to worry too much about partitioning schemes here. This is either going to be MBR or GPT. Anything new will most likely be GPT as MBR is the uh, legacy method, legacy BIOS method. The big difference for what we are doing here, since we are not creating an operating system drive, is the number and size of partitions we can create. And again, GPT the, being the more modern, you can create more and larger partitions. Most GUI-based software performs all the tasks on our list in synchronization. That is to say, you will define a partition and select a file system in one step. Working from a terminal, we will usually have to create a partition, then format it with a file system in separate steps. I plan on covering two GUI tools, KDE Partition Manager and Gparted. KDE Partition Manager is part of a KDE desktop system. There's also a GNOME Partition Manager, which is part of the GNOME desktop. Gparted, while it uses a GTK toolkit, is pretty much independent of desktop and can be loaded into any Windows Manager slash desktop. And I'm mainly doing these two because they're the ones that are currently installed. Oh, other desktop Windows managers may not have a dedicated GUI partition manager program, so consider Gparted as generic for any Windows manager slash desktop that doesn't have one. For the terminal, we will use a couple of programs for partitioning management and for formatting the file system. Uh, specifically for partitions, we're going to use FDisk, CFDisk, and Parted. For formatting partitions, we will use variations of the MKFS or Make File System. I'll be running my tests here on a 32 gigabyte USB 3 pen drive, and uh, other commands we'll be using will also be like ls and grep and there's a few others in there but you'll see as we go along so here we go so for our first uh gui uh our graphical user interface and i said like i said i'm going to be calling this uh gui or gui from now on well first before going there let's check our drive and make sure it's mounted or not mounted. That's one thing you gotta realize is you can't make any changes to a mounted drive, you need to unmount it. Anyway, this is our drive. 
and you can see it's got one partition that's full size of the drive. So we'll go ahead and uh, remove it, unmount it. Good. Now we'll start with Gparted. That's the more general partitioning uh, program, usually found under Systems. You will need to enter a password because we are doing administrative functions, aka formatting a drive, partitioning a drive. You can't do those as a normal user. This is basically sudo account we're using here to give us temporary administrative permissions. Once we open Gparted, we can see we've got a drive selector in the upper right. We've got a graphical representation of what's on the drive, and below that, a text representation. Let's go to full screen here. Now, you notice our drive doesn't show up here. So what we need to do is make sure it's recognized by the system. There it is. Had to refresh the drives. So let's go ahead and delete this partition using our uh, GUI here. We go ahead and do the delete. A couple of ways to do it here. Now, once, we're, once we've marked it for deletion, it hasn't been deleted yet. We need to uh, apply pending actions or operations. And we'll say yes. And now the drive is blank. For our next option, we will open the KDE Partition Manager. Again, we need to enter a password. Once we do that, we have a different type of display. We still have the same information, but the drives are on the left. We have the graphic above and text below. So we can see we have an unpartitioned, unformatted drive here. We're going to go ahead and select it. And we're going to go ahead and new partition we get a window that lets us says a primary extended choose our file system give it a label and determine its size whether it takes the whole drive or not there's some advanced options that we're probably not going to use you should really know what you're doing before jumping into these and you just say okay and again like previously this has been applied to the interface but it has not actually been applied to the drive you need to apply it to the drive gives you one last chance to make sure you're correct and you don't delete your operating system get the warning message and then they get the formatting box and we're done and now it has a fat 32 partition on it as you can see here and it's been labeled properly so that's it for the two GUI methods I'm covering. Like I say, there are others. GNOME has its own partition manager, and there are a few other third-party ones out there. But in general, if you got any old desktop or Windows manager that doesn't have its own partition manager, I'd go with Gparted. Otherwise, if your desktop has one, go with that. And let's move on now. Okay, the first thing we want to do is jump into the terminal and increase our font size so we can actually see this. Testing. Okay. So let's do a sudo parted dev slash sdc. This puts us into the parted program, which I think is related to gparted. We can see we have one partition here. We'll go ahead and do an rm1, which will remove that partition. And now we have no partitions. We're actually in the uh, subshell, the parted subshell of the actual terminal. You can see by the uh, prompt is parted. And we can go ahead and issue a uh, command, make label MS DOS, warning existing disk label on it. This is actually changing the disk type. It could be uh, GPT, this would change it to an MS DOS. You could also set it to a GPT. There's still no partitions. We've just changed our partitioning scheme. Now we'll go ahead and make a partition, make part. It will answer the questions. It's primary partition. It's, we'll use ext4 for the file system. Start at 1, end at 32. We'll ignore the warning for this example, and there we have a partition now created. It's an ext4. It still needs to be formatted, though. But before we get around to that, we want to play around with a few other uh, partitioning command line partitioning tools. Okay, back to the command line. This is an oldie but a goodie. We need to be root, so sudo fdisk, and then our device designation. This is a little different. Come on, just M. There we go. This is a list of the commands you can use. M sprint this menu. So 
We deleted our partition we created with D. There was only one partition. Then we created a new uh, partition. And we saved it. Now if you do it with a dash L, you can take a look at all your drives. So now that we got the drive, it's still not mountable because we need to create a file system on it. So we'll use the MKFS and we'll use the ext4 version of this command. And since it's a partition, it's SDC1 instead of SDC. So first the one for the first partition as opposed to the whole drive. It contains DOS MBR. We're going to overwrite it. And now we formatted the drive. And now it's available for mounting on our system. And you'll notice we got the lost and found folder. This is part of the journaling for ext4. It's something created by the system, so don't worry about it. You don't really have access to it, at least unless you're administrator. You can go ahead and remove the drive. Let's go ahead and clear our screen up. And if you wanted to manually mount the drive, you'd use the mount command as sudo for root, your drive partition, and then your mount point. We're going to mount it to MNT here, which is a common mount point. We can see it into that directory. If we do an ls, we should see the drive. And yeah, there's our lost and found folder. So that's how you actually mount a drive from the command line. Obviously, there's a lot more to the mount command, depending on what you're doing. But this is, at this point, it's pretty simple for what we're doing here. So other thing is you can't unmount when you're in the mount directory. So we need to go to a different directory. We'll go home in this case, and we'll un then you'd see U mount to unmount the MNT partition. So that unmounts the drive. And that's fdisk. Okay. Now, fdisk might be a little primitive, so let's try cfdisk, which is based on fdisk. It's basically a wrapper that doesn't really provide a GUI, but it does provide sort of like a text GUI sort of thing. Well, not really a graphic user interface, but it does provide you with a more user-friendly access method. So again, need root permission to do this, and then we get this nice display. We can see our device up at the top or partitions and we've got some handy uh, little menu items at the bottom so you can tab around in here and do stuff like for example change the drive type right now it's a linux which means an ext drive type ext4 there are a lot of different drive types here there's your fat drive types we'll use fat32 came in windows 95 we'll go ahead and use that and now you can see the type has changed in our uh, partition line above. Let's go ahead. If you wanted to, you can make this bootable. Let's go ahead and write the output. You got to write the output to save it. Otherwise, it, nothing happens. It's sort of like the G GUI programs in that ma matter. Okay, now let's do another uh, format. We used uh, ls in the dev directory and grep now we can see it's sdc1 let's go ahead and fat format this as a fat32 so we'll use make file system dot fat and dash f 32 for uh, the 32 version and the drive partition name and of course we need our password and now this drive is no longer an ext4 but a fat32 drive and you can see our lost and found folder is no longer there because that's not part of the file allocation table system. All right. Okay, that was a quick and dirty for uh, formatting, partitioning, setting up your uh, device. It, we'd use the USB 3 pin drive, but you could do it with a hard drive. You do need administrative permissions in Linux. That's to keep you from doing fun stuff like reformatting your system drive, although that probably wouldn't be allowed because it's mounted and you need to unmount it to uh, do any of these options to it. But as I said, this is quick and dirty how to, and I'm hoping you, if you've been ever wondering how to partition format mount a drive, this will help you out. Uh, it showed you both GUI methods and terminal methods. So. You should be well covered no matter which uh, 
Linux uh, distro or desktop or Windows manager you're using. So if you enjoyed this type of video, do a uh, like, please subscribe, uh, leave comments. I actually enjoy doing these type these. This is sort of a, was sort of an off the cuff video. Uh, I enjoy doing these a little more than the thought out ones, but let me know what you'd like to see and we'll probably do more of them. Anyway, thanks for being here. We'll catch you next time.